Good morning. Today, we're going to talk about bond chair tires. Specifically, we're going to talk about the SE5 and SE6. That said, this week, bond trigger is dropping a bunch of new tires, so the lineup's changing a bit. And we'll try to decipher what's going on there and also the nomenclature that they're currently using. Before we get into it, please hit that like or subscribe button. And if you use the links through the description or on my channel, it helps support and keep this thing going. First off, Bond Traeger tires break down into three categories at this moment, the XR, the SC, and the G. The G series tires have been like the gravity downhill tires. And at the moment, there's only one G, the G5 tire. There used to be a few more. And so it seems like they're paring things down to just the XR and SE, and then maybe those newer tires. So back to the XR versus SE. The big differences there are going to be an amount of protection in the casing, as well as the tread compounds. The SE, you're getting a sidewall and center tread protection, as well as a grippier compound. I would say, based on my riding, the XRs on anything over 140 mils of travel aren't gonna be a great option as far as flats and that kind of stuff goes. So I've been running the SE5 as well as SE6 and the SE4 on my last couple bikes. We're gonna start with the SE5. So this is a pretty worn SE5. As far as tread patterns go, I really like it. If we put it right next to the Minion DHR2, you'll notice a few things. So this has alternating centers and it's got two different options. Whereas on the Minion, you have the three different tread patterns. Besides that, you're also getting a little bit wider spacing here. So the grip on this tire is actually quite good. And when I'm comparing the compounds, you know, this isn't a, a max grip, but it is better than the Max Terra as far as grip, which also means it wears a bit faster than the Max Terra. Overall, the other thing that I really notice is the sidewall knobs are a bit shallower than the Minion. So especially on wetter days, you may not get quite the hookup. And as far as running this as a front, it's not quite as friendly as running the Minion DHR2 as a front. But as a rear, it's a really good option. And as long as you're running something like a Kush Core, here in the Pacific Northwest, it holds up pretty well. I will say running it in Colorado, I was never able to get much life out of it before getting a pinch or a tear. So maybe not your Utah or Colorado tire, unless you're a lighter weight rider, that kind of stuff. Um, but overall, I would definitely continue to run this tire here in the Pacific Northwest. Just I would have to make sure that I was running a Cush Core on it. Onto the SC6. So this tire for a front tire is actually quite good. I was very surprised how grippy their TM grip compound is. And while it's still not a max grip, it held up really well. And for most of the rocks around here, you got good traction and you didn't have to worry a ton. Um, maybe the slipperiest parts of winter, not ideal, but overall the SE6 has been a great tire. I will say, if you look at it closely, again, it's gonna very much resemble the Asagai, but you'll notice that the center blocks are not quite as big. And once aired up, this tire does have a narrower profile than the Maxxis in the same size. You'll also notice that there's a bit less support in the side knobs than on the Maxxis, but for the most part, that does a great job of just actually gripping better even though the compound's not quite as grippy. The other thing you'll notice is that the center tread's a little bit tighter, so it does tend to pack up with mud, which is an issue on the S guy, but a little bit bigger issue on the SC6. Overall though, this is a great front tire. I very much feel the sidewall support is similar to that of the Maxxis EXO Plus and does a great job when aired up to a good pressure of supporting you through the berms. 
Lastly, the SE4 tire. So this is going to be just about the fastest rolling of the SE options that still has some tread to it. I haven't run the SE4 much since moving to the Pacific North, Northwest because it does tend to slide around a whole lot when things are wet and it doesn't shed mud or have as big of side knobs for when things are getting wetter. The compound's still good. Back in Colorado and Utah with a Cush Core, this can be a pretty great rear tire. But if you are riding a 160 to 170 bike and hitting sharper rocks, you're probably going to get a flat. The G5 tire, as I kind of mentioned before, being the full gravity is probably the only tire that I would highly recommend for a race day ready rear tire from Bonchager, just because it does have plenty of sidewall support as well as a very beefed up center tread to keep you from flatting. All right. So to sum things up, we have some decent compounds and some decent tread patterns. That said, maybe not the best for how wet and muddy it does tend to get around here. The biggest issue I'm going to have with these tires though is going to be that casing. The casing is a decent one for a front, but generally I want a little bit more tread on my front tire. And for the rear, it's just not quite enough or you have to run a cush core and I'd rather not have to deal with that. So when you're thinking about tires, 85 bucks is a little bit less expensive, but it's probably not going to get me over to the Bonchere tires. If you check out the Trek website now, they are all on sale for about 65 bucks, which is a decent price if these tires fit your area and your riding style. All right, so let's talk about those new Bonchere tires. First off, new construction or casings. The XR name is gonna continue on, but it does seem like they're replacing the SE option with an XT. So you get a little bit faster rolling XC construction in the XR, as well as a tougher trail construction, bead to bead puncture protection, as well as what they call apex pinch flat protection in the XT option. You also get some new compounds. So there's going to be a fast rolling cross country dual compound a trail dual compound, as well as the highest end trail triple compound. They don't seem to offer the same amount of options as the Maxxis 3C tires, but you do get a higher quality option across the board. Now the names. So the newest one is the Val Nord, and this is gonna be a lightweight, real cross country, fast rolling tire. So probably not something that most of the stuff that I'm riding is going to call for. Then you get the St. Anne, another cross country tire. Onto the more trail and gravity oriented ones are the Gunnison and Montrose. First up, the Montrose is going to be the fastest rolling of the two, so maybe a little bit more rear oriented. It has a very interesting tread design. There are some aspects I see of a Minion DHR2, but then the side knobs seem pretty low and are very close together, as well as just some other pieces thrown in the center. So. I do see that it would roll fast, but I'm not quite sure about the overall grip there. And lastly, the new tire is the Gunnison. This guy is actually looking very similar to this, the current SE6 or that Maxxis Asagai tire, but with some angled side knobs, as well as the lower tread profile that I mentioned about the SE6 to begin with. So yeah, that's the new tires. If you take a moment to look at the charts Trek provided, it's obvious these new tires aren't really comparable to the Maxxis tires I'm currently running, as far as the tread. So we'll have to see what comes next. It's also weird to see them benchmark the Maxxis Recon, as that's not really a popular tire, at least not the circles I run in. You can also see it's grippier than the Max Terra, which is something I felt the previous tire already did pretty well. But when you consider Bontrager is also comparing the XT options to the EXO Plus, it definitely seems like there's more to come. Thanks for watching. See you next week and get out and ride. Probably overcooking this a little bit. Look how dry it is.